we'll learn from our mistakes, right? Uh, so that's fine. He's got nothing left to do. We could go ahead and sack these little kitties up. Before Conrad hits the field, right? Um, because these creatures are dying. So we want to get that right out of the way. <clears throat> so he's on a four life. And this is it, you guys. This is the slow burn. Uh, this is really it. And with that, we've absolutely killed him. Uh, because Judith is going to do an additional damage to any target. Which is as good as the Mayhem Devil. And uh, Conrad does one to us, but it's simply not enough. Conrad is also a great addition to our deck. Then we'll play our final two cats, and this is it. A, a painful, painful slow burn for your opponent. He can't do much. He doesn't even need to beat your creatures in a battle. They just get chump blocked uh, and sacrificed during the block phase. And then you're dealing damage. I'm gaining life. He was attacking me, and we left with 27 life, right? So it's just... Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we are breaking down Budget Rakdos. Now, this is a super friendly deck to be playing. If you're just starting the game, it only has seven rares and one mythic. Uh, so we have two of the rares, Knight of the Evan Legion. We have a Dreadhorde Butcher. And we have a Judas Scourge Diva, Midnight Reaper. And then Spawn of Mayhem is our mythic. And of course, where is it? Oh, Blood Crypt is a rare as well. So super friendly deck, uh, wild card wise. You can get this deck and you can be grinding out uh, ladder and standard matches with it <clears throat> really easily, which is cool. Let's break the deck down card by card and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the play style as well. We have Cauldron Familiar. When Cauldron Familiar enters the battlefield, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. And then sacrifice a food, return Cauldron Familiar from your graveyard to the battlefield, which is really, really powerful. So we can play this card, uh, have it killed, or sacrifice it, which is what we're going to be doing, and then bring it back into the field with the food and just do this ad continuum, right? We have two Knights of the Ebon Legion. This is a super powerful card. Uh, it costs one. It's a 1-2, which is also just already great ba base value. And then you can pay three. Knight at the Ebon Legion gets plus three, plus three, and gains death touch until end of turn. And at the beginning of your end step, if a player has lost four or more life this turn, you're going to put a counter on them, which is just absolutely absurd. What a broken card. So if you don't have Knight of the Ebon Legion, I'm sure you can manage spending two wild cards uh, to get a couple of him. We have Claim the Firstborn, gain control of target creature with converted mana cost three or less until end of turn. Untap that creature, it gains haste until end of turn. I absolutely love taking Hydroid Crasis's. Uh, with this, we have four Footlight Fiends. Whenever he dies, it's going to deal one damage to any target. And then here's another star of the show, which is Oven. You can pay two, sacrifice uh, this artifact, gain two life for the food token. And then you can tap it, sacrifice creature, create a food token. Uh, if the sacrifice creature's toughness was four or greater, create two food tokens instead. So we're going to be using our Witch's Oven, ideally to sacrifice our Cauldron Familiar. That's going to create the food token, and then we're going to replay our Cauldron Familiar with that food token. And then we can do this every turn. Mask of Immolation. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one red elemental, and then you're gonna equip it to it. And then equip creature has sacrificed this creature, it deals one damage to any target. So basically just becomes a footlight fiend, uh, except that you can sacrifice it whenever you like. <clears throat> and then the equip cost is two, if you're gonna wanna put that on another creature later on, which uh, we might. Angrass Rampage, just great removal in general. Choose one, target player sacrifices an artifact, sacrifices a creature, or sacrifices a planeswalker. Dread Horde Butcher, another uh, just absolutely broken rare. Uh, this is a 1-1 one, one for 2. It has haste, and then whenever it deals combat damage, you're going to put a token on it. And then whenever it dies, it's going to deal damage equal to its power to any target. So absolutely absurd there as well. Fire Blade Artist, 2-2 two, two with haste for 2. So another just great base value card. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice a creature. When you do, Fire Blade Artist deals 2 damage to target opponent or Planeswalker. And then 1 Midnight Reaper. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, Midnight Reaper deals 1 damage to you, and you draw a card. 
two light up the stages, the spectacle costs from one, normal costs for three, exile two cards of your library until end of next turn you may play those cards. One Judith Scourge Diva, this is uh, another rare here. Still pretty broken. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus zero. And then whenever a non-token creature you control dies, Judith deals one damage to any target. And then of course, four Mayhem Devils. Whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, Mayhem Devil deals one damage to any target. Uh, we also have one Spawn of Mayhem. <clears throat> this is going to uh, deal uh, one damage at the beginning of your upkeep to each player. And then if you have 10 or less life, you're going to put a 1-1 counter on him. And then, of course, he is flying trample, and you can cost it for, cast it sorry, for 3 cost uh, if you pay its spectacle. Uh, we have 10 swamps, 2 witches' cottages. When witches' cottage enters the battlefield, tapped unless you control 3 or more other swamps. Uh, when it does enter the battlefield untapped, you may put target creature card from your graveyard to your library. So this is just kind of helping us get those rares back into play uh, because we are on a budget. And then we have Dwarf in mind, uh, the same situation where you need three uh, other mountains to have this come in untapped, and then uh, you'll create a 1-1 one, one Dwarf creature token. Uh, I'm not super sure on these. Uh, it's great just to give the deck a little bit more accessibility. Uh, what I would like to see is, um, in this deck, use the list I have, but if you have any Fabled Passage, let's pretend we have one fabled passage no let's let's be wild and cheeky and say we have two fabled passages and we're gonna up the stack a little bit but of course if you don't just use the guild gates if you have more blood crypts use the blood crypts right uh we are trying to keep it relatively friendly for everybody right so we're gonna make a little bit of edits in the land you don't have to do this you can run the budget version we're gonna share the list for the budget version as well but like I said, if you have Fable Passages, put those in there because this is a sacrifice effect, which is going to trigger on your Mayhem Devil, <clears throat> which is great. And then the Blood Crypts, I'm sure we have a couple of these kicking around. But if not, run one, and then uh, you can run an extra Swamp if you want. So that's that. The whole deck focuses around having Mayhem Devil out, and then Witch's Oven with our Cauldron Familiar is great as well, just to start sacrificing everything we absolutely can. So... If you enjoyed this deck breakdown, please like the video, uh, comment down below what you thought I could improve on, of course, if you didn't like it, and then go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're at all interested in supporting us. Uh, we support you as well with our subscribers. We're giving away 500,000 gems. That's a half a million gems, you guys. Uh, so go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, I was looking at my uh, analytics and I seen that 85% of my viewership is non-subscribers, which... I find to be absolutely absurd since we're giving away literally two and a half thousand dollars in in goods to our subscribers. So what's up you guys? Subscribe to the channel. It's right in the corner. Just click it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. We have a witch's oven and a cauldron familiar. I like this. We're missing a little bit of land, but uh, I think we'll get there regardless. Right? We can double cast here, which is great. Getting that uh, life spread going already. And then we can do our Witch's Oven if he targets any of our creatures. This guy can't even handle it, you guys. Um... Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Uh, maybe you'll have that. Uh, we're not going to run this in Mythic today. Just because if we were to run it, I would like to fill out my rares. Obviously, I want to do the best job that I can possibly do when I am competing. Um, but we're going to play it in the play queue and just demonstrate it for you guys, right? And I did also release recently how to play Historic. If any of you guys are interested in playing Historic and don't know how to do it, just go watch that video, and I taught everybody uh, how to play it. It's a little bit hidden. It's pretty silly, but uh, really easy once you've got it figured out, right? <clears throat> Let's see how we do on our second budget deck match here with our Rakdos Sacrifice. Again, we're rocking our, our startup combo. A little light on land, but... Let's try it. Maybe we'll get one damage in with the cat uh, to start. 
That's perfect, because he does play his knight, which lets us sneak out our oven. So now we can chump block his knight and sacrifice our cat with the oven, which is a lot of fun. So we're going into blockers here, and then we want to activate our oven once it's been deselected, sacrificing our cat. And this is basically 80% of the match here, and then we can replay our cat, which is a lot of fun. Sacrifice this food. Now the summoning sickness is already going to be gone for our turn. Uh, we probably should do that at the end step, though, just so he can't remove it. But Order of Midnight uh, isn't really a problem. We have no red mana sources yet, so uh, a little tricky. I guess no attacks. We're going to take it easy here. He does have Knight of the Ebon Legion. That's a great card. If we could do some damage with one more land on the field, we could squeak our Spawn of Mayhem out. We're just going to throw up the blocker. He's going to be tapped. We're going to activate our oven here after he pumps it. Right, so he spent his land. And now we can just go ahead, get rid of our Footlight Fiend. And we're dealing one damage. Getting that attack in. Uh, we're going to Witch's Oven our cat now. Submit one. And then we can replay our cat. <clears throat> so you see, we've really done no damage directly, basically. We got one a cat attack in, um, and we've gained just a lot of life. We've offset his damage, and we've already got him down five points with really nothing other than the cat and the oven. Uh, if we had land, this match would, might be going uh, a lot better. And again, we're just going to go ahead and block. He doesn't pump it because he wants to play something else. Spawn of Mayhem, that's pretty groovy. That's kind of the way we wanted to go. Uh, I guess we'll play our cat here, sacrifice our food. Getting that damage, gaining that life. Absolutely terrible luck on our land here. We could probably go ahead and scoop up at this point. I mean, he's down to 13. We could try to push it, but man, where is our mountain at? All right, sacking our kitty cat again. We'll toss him out here. Sacking our food again. Down to 12, uh, but he's catching up though. Spawn of Mayhem uh, is going off and now his Knight of the Ebon Legion is ramping as well. So that's really bad for us. We're gonna do our oven now. Why not? Uh, because we're going to chump block with our Footlight Fiend instead. So we've got him down to 11, takes himself to 10. We're so far behind, it's not even funny. Um, even one mountain, and we could have lit up the stage multiple times by now. Our Spawn of Mayhem could have also done a lot of damage. So, uh, we're just getting wrecked here. Amber Cleave absolutely scooping up. Good game. Uh, 
Okay, so it should go just like that, but with more land. Uh, let's see if we can execute a little bit better here. I mean, land should be our last trouble on the budget deck, right? If we're struggling on land now, we'd be struggling on land with all the nice cards. It's not really going to make much of a difference. Obviously, a couple of the shock lands helps. The Fable Passages help. I would always focus on that. If you are prioritizing how to spend your wild cards, start with land. Always start with land, you guys. Get that out of the way. And it's just going to give you a lot more consistency when you play. All right, third time's a charm. This is looking a lot better, you guys. So with Claim the Firstborn, we can also sack... Uh, I can't believe we, we have two cats, that's crazy. Uh, with Claim the Firstborn, we can actually take one of their creatures with our Witch's Oven out, and then sack it. So he's killing our cat. And uh, it auto-tapped our land wrong. So try to also, when you're playing, you guys, manually tap your land. That's a good habit to get into. Right, we're gonna play our cat now. Um, and we'll just start from there. He did scoop our first one out, so we played that in the wrong order. And we kind of messed up our, our land drop. But he didn't play anything, so it's not bad. I'm keeping that land uh, unsacrificed because I want that sacrifice uh, effect from Mayhem Devil. So we're going to take his Felomir Knight. And we're sacking it. And then we're going to play our other cat. Oh, no, we're actually attacking. <laughs> Silly me. Uh, we do see a Mortify, which is fine. Uh, we could have sacked our own creature, but I think it's still worth it uh, to clear his creature. Then we get our cat. That's great. And we can go ahead and play another Knight of the Ebon Legion. Oh, goodness. We'll end our turn here. Holding on to Agra's Rampage, so we've got one removal for whatever he plays. We should be able to cycle these cats out on him unless he removes our Witch's Oven, which is unlikely. He's really just going for the draw, pushing himself. He's done two damage to himself. That's going to be absolute game, you guys. Uh, that's the saddest thing I've ever seen. Uh, we're attacking with all. And we'll just Witch's Oven. Actually, cancel. We won't. We'll just do damage. And then uh, we kind of screwed that up. We should have Angrath's Rampaged. Falmir Knight first, but nonetheless, uh, that's totally fine. We're just gonna cycle our cats really quickly. Playing those, sacrificing a food for each one. 
dealing one damage, gaining one life each time, of course. And this is all without uh, Mayhem Devil on the field as well. So it would get a lot worse. Uh, that's pretty cool, uh, to be honest. So we're going to take a lot of damage here. Because every time we deal a damage to him, he's going to deal one to us as well. Uh, but I guess we could just go ahead and have him sacrifice his beloved Conrad. We're going to get in for two damage here. Uh, we'll end our turn and we'll do it uh, on his turn because we don't want to really blow the whole show up. We'll learn from our mistakes, right? Uh, so that's fine. He's got nothing left to do. We could go ahead and sack these little kitties up. before Conrad hits the field, right? Um, because these creatures are dying. So we want to get that right out of the way. <clears throat> so he's on a four life. And this is it, you guys. This is the slow burn. Uh, this is really it. And with that, we've absolutely killed him. Uh, because Judith is going to do an additional damage to any target. Which is as good as the Mayhem Devil. And uh, Conrad does one to us, but it's simply not enough. Conrad is also a great addition to our deck. Then we'll play our final two cats. And this is it. A, a painful, painful slow burn for your opponent. He can't do much. He doesn't even need to beat your creatures in a battle. They just get chump blocked uh, and sacrificed during the block phase. And then you're dealing damage. I'm gaining life. He was attacking me and we left with 27 life, right? So it's just not enough. And that is budget Rakdos. We're looking at seven to 10 rares, depending on how you want to fill the lands out. And we've got one mythic, obviously. If you have more than one spawn of mayhem, incorporate that into the deck. But uh, yeah, if any of you guys are just starting out, just beginning, and you're wondering what deck do I play, I want to play some of the newer decks that are competitive, but I don't have all these wild cards when I'm looking at sites like MTG Top 8 at these tournament decks. Uh, so this is going to get you guys started. We've got a couple more to look at, so they're going to be shorter videos, and we're going to pump them out more frequently. Uh, but let me know what you thought. And if you're interested in seeing more budget decks and stuff like this, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe to the channel or if you're interested in free stuff, uh, that is. And uh, if you are really looking uh, to help me, subscribe to, uh, not even subscribe, sorry, uh, like and comment. Those are the best things you can do. And then up the watch time, up, 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 up with the watch time. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you all later.